The 96K layout is a compact full-size option that offers everything from the navigation cluster, the function row, and the numpad in a package just a little bigger than a TKL. This is achieved by utilizing all the space that would have been empty in the navigation cluster and moving around the couple functions. One such keyboard is the RS96. The full name for this keyboard is the RedScarf 3 version A, but I'll just refer to it as the RS96. I'm not really sure how the RedScarf naming convention works. This is a fairly old design. I think the Red Scarf line of keyboards has a long history, but these particular ones ran on Mass Drop in 2016 and again not too long ago. There were two case options, the Standard and the Deluxe. I have both of them here and they're quite a bit different. The Standard RS96 is very simple. It's just an aluminum rectangle. The corners are rounded and the bezels are a medium thickness with just a tiny bit of chamfer. The bottom is one thick piece of acrylic that just screws into the aluminum walls. You can optionally use these aluminum feet, which I think look like an afterthought, though it is nice to have the option of a zero degree typing angle for improved ergonomics. Overall, it doesn't really have much in the way of design elements. It just looks like a whatever keyboard with a weird layout. Maybe it'll be pretty stealthy in an office environment. The deluxe version on the other hand really lives up to its name. The top bezel is actually identical to the standard case, but the platform makes all the difference. Instead of having separate feet to provide the angle, the case itself is machined to be inclined. The platform by itself also has a bit of design. From the side it gets more cut in as you approach the rear of the board. And in the recess sits an acrylic diffuser plate which lets the underglow through. I think this execution is much better than the standard design as the light can be a little accent rather than a big design element. The Deluxe definitely has more thought put into it and is for sure a more attractive and unique keyboard in my eyes. In either case, the layout aesthetic is also something to consider. In my Race 3 review, I mentioned how I don't really like the stacked number and function rows, and the same goes here. Just that disruption of stagger by the final row is kind of distracting and it's not my favorite. It is somewhat mitigated if you use keycap sets with color variants in the region like most GMK sets, but the clutter is still there. I think the addition of the numpad so closely attached to the main 60% only exacerbates this. Moving on to the construction, there are yet more differences between the two variants. I assume machining and finishing for the two variants is done at the same factory, so no difference there, but everything else shows a huge contrast. The deluxe version clearly has more metal in it, and accordingly it weighs almost double, even triple, the standard option. In the hand, this weight gives the impression of a high quality board for the deluxe, while the standard actually feels kind of cheap, weighing under 2 pounds. Of course, as I've said before, weight is really a false measure of quality, but the standard RS96 is just unexpectedly light for its size. Both the standard and the deluxe cases are tray mount, meaning that the PCB is attached to the case by 10 screws. One differentiating factor regarding this is that in the deluxe case, the PCB mounts directly to the case aluminum, while in the standard case it mounts to brass standoffs that are fixed to the bottom acrylic plate. In theory, this should mean some kind of difference in terms of typing field, but I couldn't detect anything. One complaint that I have with the mounting mechanism, particularly to the standard case, is that I feel like it could have easily been converted to a top mount. It's an old and terrible video, but the RS78 that I covered before had basically an identical design, but it was top mount, and I even regretted selling the board after that because of how good it felt. In contrast, the RS96, both standard and deluxe, feel nothing out of the ordinary. I feel like this was a big missed opportunity. In any case, have a listen to both of them. These are Otemu Ice V2 Purples. These switches are particularly loud and unrefined sounding, which I thought should make the differences more evident. To my ears, the deluxe case dampens the sound a bit with this sheer mass. As I said before, the typing experience is nothing unexpected. It's got a solid bottom out like other tray mount solutions, so plan your switches accordingly. You've probably noticed the big gap next to the space. I bought all of these from eBay, and they all have this problem. This seems to have been a widespread mistake for the latest round of orders from Mass Drop. The cutout simply wasn't there. I went ahead and cut one of the other plates to allow the layout, but that took kind of forever. 
I used a rotary tool with cutoff disks and finished it with files, and it took about two hours with my very limited skill set. I got three more plates, so yay me. Another big problem that plagues not just this round but all rounds of Red Scarf keyboards is the horrendous programming method. It's a real pain, but I was able to flash something using the method that Living Speedbump made on Mastrop, which itself is an aggregation of previous work. I'll link it in the description. There's a different problem with the PCB as well. The very first RS-96 I owned, the PCB came dead on arrival. It would type multiple characters across many columns for each key pressed, which probably meant a short. After some searching, it seemed that this was a pretty common issue and that other people have had problems with PCBs just breaking out of the blue. Thankfully, all of mine are operational, and I have before used a YMDK96 PCB in the past, so it is at least fixable. My final gripe with the usability of the keyboard is with the underglow controls. As is with other Red Scarf keyboards, this uses a stupid cheap RGB LED controller remote. You're able to map all of the functions onto the buttons on the keyboard, so my question is, why wasn't it like that out of the factory? The remote is just another thing you might lose, and it's very limited in its functionality when compared to modern underglow offerings. However annoying they might be, these complaints are all on the PCB, which can be replaced relatively easily, so don't let that be a deal breaker for you. The RS-96 supports a variety of layouts. The most keycap friendly one would be the NC60% with a standard numpad, but that sort of defeats the goal of the 96 k layout. One better option is to split the numpad 0 so that it can also act as a navigation cluster, much like on a Vortex Vibe or that one Cooler Master keyboard. A different approach is to embed the arrow keys between the 60% and the numpad by splitting the right shift. I think this is probably the layout that most people go with, and it does pack the most amount of functionality into the space. I'm someone who doesn't really use the numpad very often, so this layout isn't particularly useful for me, but I do know that there are many that love theirs. I also found that the arrow keys existing right next to the other keys to be slightly distracting. When I was navigating to them, I'd sometimes end up one unit off, which can be a bit annoying, but these are the trade-offs that you need to make when moving to a compact layout. So when you're looking at something like this versus a TKL, you should actually figure out if you really need the numpad, because there may be some things about the bigger layout that bothers you. In conclusion, I do like these keyboards, particularly the deluxe one. I'll be keeping it around for occasional use, but it definitely won't be a daily driver by any means. Maybe if I'm working and I find myself using the numpad often, I'll consider it, but other than that, the RS-96 doesn't really have many standout features that warrant any awards. However, the abundance of keys along with this compact size might make it a lot more usable for regular non-enthusiast people, so I'll probably give a couple away to family and friends. I'll also give away one of these with a plate hand cut by me to one of you guys, be on the lookout for that later. Thank you for watching, and like if you liked the video. If you'd like more content like this, and maybe a chance to win this keyboard, subscribe.